the, the reflection of the sun, even though we've got those really, really short little brush strokes, um, we still can see an absolute picture. So it is the impression of the picture, but we can still see it. Same with um, this one, for example. This is just another, my husband is actually a painter, so he was very adamant about who I included on this slide. <laughs> he insisted that I include Marie Cassatt. Marie Cassatt was um, a big um, impressionist painter as well. I really do love this painting. Um, this is Lydia in the garden with the dog. And so you can see all those very, very small strokes. Um, so we've created kind of an impression of this, but I can still tell that that's a woman sitting in a chair in a garden with a dog. You see that? It's the impression of that, but I can still very much see it. Um, my husband also wanted me to include, we have Monet and we have Manet. Two different painters, but both were uh, painting during the Impressionist period. So this is the luncheon on the grass. This is one of my husband's. He's, um, he really likes um, nudes for some reason. He likes nude paintings. So um, <coughs> this is one of his favorite. A little more detailed, not quite as, as small in the brush strokes as, say, Monet or Marie Cassatt, but just some examples of what Impressionistic painting was. So let's talk about it in um, music. So it was inspired by painters like Monet, Renoir, Degas um, in the late 1860s. That's when the impressionistic, impressionistic period started happening. And so like we talked about, artists use those short visible brush strokes instead of continuous lines to imply the impression of the object rather than the actual representation of the object. They were particularly interested in the effects of light on our per uh, perception of an object. So color took precedence over line. So we're really experiencing with light and color. Now in music, the Impressionist style is similarly based on that style where we blur harmonies, rhythms, and forms. We tend to avoid those clear cadences like we had before where we get to a one or a five, a, a tonic or a dominant in a piece of music. Um, same with the rhythmic patterns. They're a little more blurred. They're not as structured as they were before. Um, music, most importantly, often seems to ebb and flow with a sense of motion. Just like we heard in the WC piece, The Bolts. We always tend to feel that sense of motion. You heard the wind in the sails. You heard the metal ding, 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 ding. You can hear the boat just kind of bouncing lightly on the water. Um, so so that's, that's how we take Impressionism and put it in music. We're going to start blurring things a little bit and making them not as structured as they had been before. Okay. I want to get to Igor Stravinsky. He's going to be the last person we talk about today, so hopefully we have time to listen to everything I want to listen to by him because with a name like Stravinsky, where's this guy from? Russia. He's from Russia. I love the Russian composers. Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky. So Tchaikovsky was really more romantic. Stravinsky comes in, um, we consider him more 20th, 20th century composer. He was born in 1882. He did live to 1971, so he died just shortly before I was born. Dang, I would have been honored to meet this person. Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, Beethoven, oh man, I'd just be beside myself to meet any of these people. So like we said, he's a Russian um, composer. He's a pianist and he is a conductor as well. Um, one of the reasons that we're going to talk about Igor Stravinsky is because he is considered to be one of the most influential composers of the 20th century, along with Schoenberg. We do need to mention Schoenberg. We're not going to really talk about him as much, but Stravinsky and Schoenberg had a lot to do with how music is changing in the 20th century. Things are start, going to start to get really different, really weird, really loud, really aggressive, <laughs> really atonal, really mixed meter. So, uh, let's talk about, um, so Stravinsky composed three iconic ballets. We have Firebird, Petrushka, and Rite of Spring. Have any of you heard of those before? A couple of you? All right. So, we're going to talk about Rite of Spring, which holds a really strong place in my heart, and you'll see why. Um, Rite of Spring really, truly transformed the way in which subsequent composers thought about rhythmic structure, and it was largely responsible for Stravinsky's enduring reputation as a musical revolutionary who really, truly pushed the boundaries of musical design. 
you are going to hear um, this massive mega orchestra. You are going to hear chords that you've never heard before. You are going to um, find mix meters that I can't tap my foot to. I can't find the beat. What's happening? Things start to get really, really different. Um, but it is um, something I did want to note is that later in Stravinsky's career, he does revert back to the neoclassical music using more traditional forms. So he starts off doing this really just bizarre, out there kind of stuff. But towards the end of his career, he does start going back to the neoclassical style and using more structure um, and things like that in his composition. So a little bit about the Rite of Spring. This premiered in 1913. So if you think of it, it really wasn't that long ago. Maybe 100 years ago. In the grand scheme of things, not that long ago. Um, so some things about the Rite of Spring. This was originally intended and written as a ballet. Does anybody know what Rite of Spring is about? It is about the sacrifice to the gods. What is it? pretty deep. It's pretty dark. We're going to start sacrificing people. We're going to start killing people. The demons are going to come out and things are going to get really freaky. Um, and so the first time this premiered was written by LA. Costumes, staging, music was unlike anything anyone had ever heard before. I mean, if you think about uh, sacrificial rituals, they're not going to be wearing pretty little tutus and they were wearing weird costumes. With all this mixed meter, the dancing was really bizarre. It was really hard to follow. The staging was just, people were so blown away that they literally caused a riot after this happens. They're like, that was the most freaking weird thing I've ever seen. Let's just start setting things on fire. I mean, people literally rioted. I mean, and it got so, I, I read, um, I've done a lot of research on Stravinsky as well. I've read that when this premiered, people were so obnoxious and rowdy um, that the orchestra had to get even louder and louder. And I mean, this is a mega orchestra as it is. And the, the choreographers in the background flicking the lights on and off with people, shut up, people, shut up. I mean, it was panic. It was just pure chaos because people were like, that was garbage. I can't believe that we paid money for this. And so um, we're gonna listen to this. Today, this is, we performed this with the Boulder Symphony last year, and I was so excited. I mean, if you tell people you're gonna perform right in spring, and it's a packed house. This is a very, very prolific piece today. Um, and we're gonna listen to it, some of it. So, it's not exactly atonal, but it's polytonal. It sounds really, ah, uh, hurty on the ears, because there's a lot of keys and, and tones happening at the same time. Stravinsky was one of those people who took chords and really diminished them and made them dark and deep. I mean, we're gonna start sacrificing people, so it's probably not gonna sound lovely, right? We're gonna kill people. Um, so, melodies are based on a pentatonic scale, um, which is something we haven't really talked about very much, but good to know. Like we said, we have this mixed meter. You're not gonna be able to tap your foot very well. We get a lot of one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. The whole thing is like that. So it makes it really, really, really hard to find beat, tap your foot to. So because of that, this is actually through compose. We get very little repetition of music between individual seconds, uh, sections. It's just one big long piece. We don't hear a lot of repetition. We're gonna, it's basically a story. We're gonna sacrifice some people. She's actually gonna dance herself to death. Woo, big face. And not only that, but this is this mega orchestra. Normally we see two flutes, two clarinets, two bassoons, two trumpets, <coughs> double everything. Oh, and add two contra bassoons, add um, an alto clarinet, add bass trombones, add tubas, add multiple harps, add um, uh, two sets of timpani, the most percussive instruments you've ever seen. Ooh, you're gonna love this. When we get to the gong part, oh, it's so exciting. Um, let's move, let's do this. So, I'm gonna give you a minute to, I don't wanna read this to you, read through this. This is the story of what's happening on stage. So let me give you a minute to read through that. I don't wanna read that to you. I talk too much. Okay. 
the beginning it starts out kind of nice. The second half of things start to get really crazy. Thank you. 
something different.
So I think people today can really truly appreciate this for what this is now. Where back then they really couldn't. So part two, listen to that, is also um, very interesting. Keep them moving. One more thing before we get started. Another one of my favorites from Stravinsky. How many of you have seen Fantasia 2000? I was going to tell people that only take what they need with Liberty Mutual. Fine, I'll try. All right. Your childhood fans of Pikachu. Coincidence. I've never been yeah. so flattered and creeped out at the same time. This is Stravinsky's Firebird Suite. Yeah, make sure you take everything off your desk. 